Welcome, everybody. This is the City Council Select Committee to Study Barriers to Serving on City Boards and Commission. Today's March 21st, 2023, and this meeting starts at 7.30. Um, we're going to call the meeting to order. Laura, can we do a roll call? Sure. Um, Javier. Here. Um, Jamila. Here. Garrick. Here. Cynthia. Here. And Gwen is not present yet. Hopefully we'll join soon. And we have quorum. Yes. Excellent. Um, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna do the same and I'm gonna do and say the same thing that I do every week. We always allocate at the beginning of each meeting uh 15 minutes uh to give space for people to come to do public comment. We have a couple of people during the tenure of this uh, committee. One of those uh community members was um Megan Pike, the chair of the Human Rights Commission, and that sort of led to uh, she coming here and sort of working with us in, a, in an incredibly good uh, um, sort of uh, more than one page informative that we're going to be using as a recommend as a part of the recommendations to streamline and how people get to know and what they are getting into. Um, so as I said, this is public comment. Um, I don't see anybody yet. We we today is an exception that this meeting is happening in. March 21st, uh, regular meeting times uh, are the second and the fourth week of each month. Uh, people can go to uh, the agenda center for of the city of Northampton to, to see our agendas previous and the ones that are coming. Um, if uh, anybody want to come is more uh, than welcome. If anybody's watching this as a recording, it's also welcome to come. Um, I'm going to close uh, public comment and we're going to move to the next agenda item. Um, excellent. Uh, agenda item number three approval of minutes for previous meeting. Everybody was able to check. Uh, the minutes from February 14, 2023 and February 28, 2023. Everybody was able to sort of to, to see. Anybody has a, an amendment for those uh, minutes? Excellent, I don't see any, any amendment. Um, I'm looking for a motion to approve the minutes from February 14 and February 20, 2023. I'll make a motion to approve. Excellent. Looking for a second. Jamila, second. Jamila, can you repeat it just for the record? Oh, I'll second. Excellent. Uh, so the minutes had been approved. And I just want to let you know that Jean is helping us to get up to date with our um, minutes, with the minutes being posted. And, you know, when <coughs> I talked to uh, City Council President Nash today about it. And he has been working on it. I appreciate the support that he's given us. Um, oh, do, that, do we have to vote to approve? Do we have to vote to approve? Oh, that's true. Yeah, like a roll call. Yeah. Roll call, Laura, for the approval of the minutes of uh, February 14 and February 28, 2023. Javier. Yes. Jamila. Yes. Um, Cynthia. Yes. And Garrick. Yes. Perfect. Minutes approved. Thanks, Jamila. And just, I think all of the minutes are posted except that no, there's three meetings in November that um, Beth Kaplowit hadn't finished transcribing the first, the eighth, and the 29th. And there are some that look as if they're not posted, but those were actually me meetings that were canceled due to technical difficulties. So I, I need to go and just indicate that those, me those meetings did not take place. So otherwise, I believe we're up to date except for those three. November meetings. Perfect. Excellent. Um, so we're going to go to the next agenda item, which is uh, that has uh, the different subdivision general discussion items. Um, I'm going to give a survey update uh, and I'm going to move number A 
for later, uh, which is a discussion with Mayor Gina Luis Shara. Um, she's coming, but she's running late because uh, there's a trustee meeting from the Smith Polk. So we're gonna move that later in um, agenda number four, if that's okay with everybody. It's I see everybody's noting. Survey update. So we are we have 148. Um, so I'm confident that by the end of this week, we're gonna have 150, which is massive. Um, I, I, was gonna, I was gonna print uh, and I'm, I was gonna get a PDF version of the survey with all the data that we have so far, but I'm gonna wait to get 150, probably by the end of this week. And I will send each member sort of, it's literally the same, um, the same report that you already guys got a couple of weeks ago, uh, about a half ago, two months ago, uh, with all the data, all the percentages, all the charts, it's and includes also all the narrative answers for each question. Um, probably what we're gonna do, we're gonna close after after the the the, the public speaking event this uh, the twenty sixth. We're gonna close the the survey time. And we're gonna work with the numbers that we have, right? If we, if there is anything else, we can add an an, amend, an amended section that says that after this day we receive X, Y, and Z number of, of survey, but the numbers are represented all the way to uh, the end of March. Um, it's any question in relationship to that? I was in, in and I and, and I I realized that I never asked. Was it useful and readable and accessible the way how Qualtrics produced that PDF report? So I'm gonna put it on the, there if, if members want to comment. Cynthia? So you're, you're asking if Qualt Qualtrics version was accessible or what yeah, you the, did your summary no if the report was accessible because i realized that we never talk about oh this looks like like a good automatic report it's readable i'm understanding everything i don't need anything else i never asked that question when we start talking and i realized that so i want to ask now that i'm going to produce sort of the final automatic report and that's the one you kind of massage though wasn't it yes Okay, so yeah, just to make sure I knew what you were asking. So I was I was good with it. I don't know about anyone else? Yeah, I, I was able to navigate it pretty fairly easy. Yeah, the one that was a PDF, right? Yes, yes, not the yeah. first one. That was a bad spreadsheet. <laughs> okay, yeah, the PDF one was, was readable. Okay. Laura, you also saw it, right? Yes, yeah, no, I thought it was great. Okay. The format. So I'm gonna, because the system gives you different um, ways to output a report. My first attempt, as you know, was a pretty ugly, bad spreadsheet. And that, but after that, I found out a way that it's actual sort of looks like a, like a, like a valid report. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna use the same and everybody's gonna get a copy. Uh, and we're closing, we're closing the survey this Sunday if that's okay with everybody here. Excellent. Um, we're gonna move ahead. And everybody was able to take a look to the versions that I sent from the flyer. I mean, before that, uh, Laura already made sure that uh, more than 400 people got an email that we drafted with the invitation for, for March 26th. And we were just talking with Laura in, in the same in same fashion that when she sent the email, the first email for this outreach of the survey, she's already gotten a couple of people saying that are going to be attending to the event, which is sort of, it's, it's a mirror situation, which it's pretty sort of hopeful. And Laura, one of the things that I told uh, Jim today was how, how much to appreciate your work. <laughs> for real. Very welcome. <laughs> Um, so I'm going to show you, I'm going to turn my screen, hold on, I'm going to, first I'm going to select, oh, when is coming? Um, I'm going to share my screen. 
um, with the different versions of the... Hey, Wen. Hello, how are you? Good. Um, let me give you, I'm gonna give you sort of an over, like a one minute overview where we are so far. Okay. So the mayor, the mayor is coming today, but we're moving sort of through the agenda, putting like moving her down the agenda so we can talk about that, about other things while she's coming. Okay. Um, the last day of the service is gonna be this coming Sunday. So okay. we close any, any, any other uh, entry from the survey is gonna be added to the end of the, of the report as an amended portion. Oh, that's great. Okay. And by Sunday, uh, because we're gonna close the survey, I'm gonna send the final report. Uh, okay. the, the, remember the, the 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 report that has the the charts, the percentages, um, and I asked each member how they felt about the, that format, that automatic report. Was it was was it useful for you and easy to read? Yeah, I I definitely appreciated the bars um, and the different colors. The varying colors were helpful as well. Um, I think that's what you mean, right? Yeah, because if you remember, the first one that I sent was a spreadsheet that was pretty bad. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, I mean, it. I think it's very good. I mean, you know, the use of color is really helpful. Um, it definitely shows up on the screen. It's, you know, kind of self-explanatory with the, the key. And, um, and I'm happy to hear that... Um, maybe one last shootout for anyone who thinks that someone didn't get to it yet would be um, nice to have just a couple more days before the um, deadline, which would be Sunday. Yes. So since, um, since the, so Laura sent a reminder around two weeks ago and we increased participation by 25% since that reminder. Yeah. It's extremely good, right? We're close to 150 right now. Yeah, that's pretty good. So, um, and to, and Laura, make sure that uh, the the um, we sent an email with the Zoom link. So we drafted an email and we sent it with the Zoom link as invitation to more than 400 people that also got the survey, but more than 400 people uh, to attend. And one of the things that I was saying is that I was talking with Laura and in the same fashion that when she sent the survey, she got a middle responses, a positive response from people. She got a couple of positive responses in relation to people attending the event, which is, you know, we're in a good place. So now with all that being said, I'm gonna share the flyer that uh, is gonna be sent by all the counselors and it's going to be sent by, by, by the city and it's going to be shared widely. And we're going to decide it's, it's, it's three different, three of the same flyers with little tiny bit um, uh, of edits. So, so we're going to start here. Um, let me do this here. Um, I, I'm trying to open this. Ah, now I can see it better. Um, so this is the first, everybody can see this? Yep. So this is the first one. So the committee yep. uh, to start various to survey and state boards and commissions, Zoom legion and session, March 26, 12 p.m. Uh, we're close to completing our report and we would like to hear from you about your experience and how we can make the process related to serving on boards and committees better. And then the bottom is the Zoom link like big okay. display. The second one is similar, but let's worry. We're close to completing our report and we'd like to hear from you about your experience. How can we, you know, how can we make the process related to serving boards and committees better? Okay. And this is the last one, which is pretty much the same. So, um, So um, I'm so we use Canva to do this. So uh, like ninety percent, ninety five percent of what is there, it's already sort of done by the system. So um, 
I'm inclined to do this one, which looks a little less chunky and bulky than the other. To, uh, the other. Mm -hmm. And the good thing is that I'm going to send it to you and people are going to be able to double tap the PDF version of it. And the typing the PDF is going to immediately open the Zoom link. Okay. Right? Yeah. And the other option for those that may, may not be able to do that, they can just copy paste it on the, on the toolbar of the browser and just use it. Okay. Any, any, any comments, any uh, additions, subtractions? Yes. Uh, so I'm assuming this is just, this is a digital only kind of thing or not. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to try to print uh, a, a bunch uh, tomorrow and I'm going to sort of give it, a, I'm going to give it to the coffee shops around in downtown in different places. And if you guys want to just to print it out uh, and, and, and put it around, that's also fine. I mean, I'm going to make sure that all the bulletin boards in downtown and around downtown get this one sort of plastered with. Okay. If that's, if that's the case, could I make a suggestion to possibly put a little QR code somewhere? It's funny. Yeah. I do were saying that I thought, oh, that's, yeah, yes. Yeah, so I'm gonna I'm gonna add a QR code. Yeah, that, that way people you can take a picture of it on your phone and then boop, boop. yeah, boop. yeah. I think that's a really great idea. Excellent. I, so I'm gonna, I I'm gonna um, it looks like the third one has the most amount of information on it. Yep. Yeah, and, that, that's correct. Yeah, and I and I like the colors and everything. It looks good. It's noticeable. And um, as long as I can print it out, I can spread it around. Excellent. So uh, what I'm gonna do, which is the main, main, main comment is I'm gonna add a QR code so people can, can any other, Cynthia. Um, I, always, I always hate it when people do this wordsmithing, but I just want to, now that you, if this, if this were distributed to city councilors, which I think you said, Javier? Um, so, so, so the baseline is that every elected official is going to send it to their mail to their set up. Okay. Yeah, which which makes total sense. But now that we've talked about putting in coffee shops and think about people who have no clue what this is, right? Yeah. So they're going to see, we, we, we want to hear from you about your experiences. Like what kind of experiences, <laughs> you know, I just think that audience, I mean, I'm not, you know, going to make a big deal out of it, but it just, um, they may need to know what this is, right? I mean, I don't know if select committee to study barriers um, really, um, really says it, right? To, to the average city resident. So I just, I just question that, but I think we're in a, um, a time crunch here. Yep. So I don't want to wordsmith it too much, but Garrick, you do this for a living, um, kind of, sort of. <laughs> yes. Oh, uh, yeah. Scraping by. Um, I had some questions, about thoughts about that as well, but I've also felt that we're, we're low on time. Yep. Um, my, my biggest thing was that it says, we want to hear about your experience, but I, I, my thought is that we want to hear about people who might not have even try to apply because they don't know you know like we want to bring a, a, a wide net of folks education yeah i can i can i can add it thought and experience yeah something, yeah. something. okay so i'm gonna i'm gonna let me so i'm gonna add the, i'm gonna so i'm adding the qr code um and i'm adding thoughts and experience I will also send you some notes. I think that there can be some formatting, some color, some, like moving moving the date up a little bit to separate it from itself. There's, there's a couple of minor tweaks I think we could do. Excellent. Just be really. <laughs> I'll be gentle. I'll be no, gentle. No. Be be brutal if you want, but be really specific so we don't create communication, ongoing communication. That's what I mean. Yes. Okay. It, and what's nice about this version, Javier, before we start maybe going into others, I think this version was the only one that said Northampton, but I could be wrong because I was, <laughs> they were sliding by kind of quickly. So we want to make sure it's Northampton, yeah. right? 
Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. So, um, any, Andrew, Laura. I just had one thought. You know, in addition to improving the processes for serving on city boards and committees, I was thinking, you know, the pertinent question would be how can Northampton enable more people to participate? But, you know, I, I know it doesn't want to get, you don't want to get too long. Improving but, uh, Northampton can improve how, the processes. How can North, Northampton enable more people to participate? I don't know, you're always kind of trying to increase the range of people in the community. Yeah, perfect. But, but I don't, you know, if it seems to make it too long, that wouldn't be good either, so. Can I ask a quick question? Hi, everybody. Hi. Hi. Yes. Is that, is that gonna be a hyperlink at the bottom? Cause, oh boy. It is. Yeah, I, I mentioned that and there's gonna be QR code as well. There's, there's a, I was, whew. <laughs> It's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna be a hyperlink, so people can just go there. In the worst case scenario, they can just copy paste it and add it to the to the bar of the browser. It actually works right now. Excellent. It'll take you to Zoom. Excellent, because I I send uh, copies of this beforehand. Excellent, excellent. So I have Laura's comments, Cynthia's comment, and Gary's comment. If anybody else wants to um, think about something else later, just let me know. Uh, tomorrow at, let me, I'm gonna, mm -hmm, the deadline for comments is gonna be tomorrow at, and see my Wednesday, um, 10 a.m. <laughs> just because that, that's, that's my first meeting tomorrow. Excellent. So that's all that. We're gonna move to, we did a survey update. Uh, we talk about the event and now we're gonna move to welcome Mayor Gina Luis Chara. Thank you. Hi everyone, I'm glad to be with you. Thank you for uh, moving me a bit on the <clears throat> schedule. I, I appreciate it. I, had Smith folks trustees this evening. Thank so you I, so much. And it's in person, so I had to like raise back here. From <laughs> you know, it's funny. I'm suffering from the same that people, some people are still with Zoom, but others with face to face meetings, which, you know, sometimes I'm doing the Zoom on the, in my car while commuting mm -hmm. to the other one that's in person. It's crazy. Yeah, it's really hard. We haven't figured out how to build back in that time to move ourselves through time and space anymore. Mayor, thank you so much for being here. Um, you know, we have been having a lot of a, a lot of discussions. We also talk how we are getting almost 150 answers to the survey that we put out. Uh, thanks to Laura, uh, to people who have served. Uh, in different capacities, in different commissions and boards, but also people who have applied and they have not been appointed, mm -hmm. right? To, to get a sense more or less about the the processes and 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 sort of what how people feels the processes. Um, I'm pretty sure members have a lot of questions, and I'm gonna sort of open with a with a doozy one that I was thinking today. Okay. Uh, I met today with uh, City Council President Nash, and all of a sudden I have an epiphany about it. It's like, so we're heading right now into in budget season. I mean, you're a rating budget season, obviously. Deep, yes. Uh, and, and one of the things that the select committee has been talking a lot is about sort of revamping in some way the website of the city. Mm -hmm. right? sort of, and, and, and I think, and you know, I'm pretty sure you hear about this a lot, which is, you know, how do we get people in the less amount of clicks from the point A to the point B? Mm -hmm. um, and, and in the case of, of accessibility and access to the information about, you know, vacant, vacancies in, uh, in boards and commissions, what the commissions are about, and, and all that information that people, so for people to be able to do sort of an educated guess, okay, do I want to do it? I may not want to do it, you know. And in, in, in that also um, is streamlining the process of somebody sending their application and getting an aut automated email back saying, thanks for your application. Just should we hear from us in X amount of time. Um, now, going back, now that, that we're sort of 
in 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 the in in sort of a <laughs> for anybody who's not the mayor in the Christmas season of the city. Uh, <laughs> I'm how, sure it feels like Christmas Eve, but okay. <laughs> How do how do what do you what are your thoughts in relationship to 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 that to sort of streamlining a little Changing. bit? So I mean, it would be a dream of mine to completely revamp our website. Um, but um, so, are you asking about that in in the context of the budget because it will take resources to do something, or because I'm 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 assuming that. It may need some small allocation to be able to have sort of a a, 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 a makeover. So that would actually be more of a capital expense. Well, it depends, actually, right? So if it was an over ten thousand dollar expense, it could be a capital expense. It wouldn't be something necessarily that we would build into the budget because it would be a one time expense. Um, <clears throat> So um, again, it would be a dream of mine to totally revamp the website. I actually feel like the boards and committees section is perhaps the best placed section. Maybe I don't know what that says about the rest of the website, but you know, when you go to the page, like it's right smack dab in the middle is that button to go to boards and committees. Uh, don't get me started on that. We that we we break them, we break the alphabet in half. <laughs> that makes me crazy because I'm always like, L, M, N, trying to figure out like which of those to click on. Um, I would like that to be easier. Uh, but in terms of actually like getting to current vacancies, it should be one click um, to get there just from that button right in the center of the screen. Um, but yes, there, there are all sorts of dreams I have for uh, making changes to the site. You know, um, maybe it was my first or second year as city councilor. We actually won a Mass, uh, Massachusetts Municipal Association Award for our city website. <laughs> we were, it was like considered to be a great site. Um, and I'm not sure that I, I felt that way then. And I'm sorry, Mayor Narkowitz was very proud. Um, and so I no disrespect. But um, I do feel like we could do a better job of it. That would probably be something that um, I would build. So we are just the council is just a, in the in their next meeting going to vote on the capital plan. Um, a complete revamp of the site might be something that I would build into a capital plan at some point. Um, but smaller tweaks uh, we could pretend we could do. Um, you know, hopefully fairly easily and in-house without a lot of expense. And, and, and one of the, so one of the reasons I'm, I'm asking is, so we we had given public comment, but also coming to a working session with us, Megan Pike, chair of the Human Rights Commission, right? And one of the, among the many things that they are working, one of the, one of those was uh, sort of a, a little more than one pager explaining what they are, how they do it, right? What Human you Rights know, Commission does? Yeah. Uh -huh. And because, you know, the charge is one, but how, how it's run, the different roles, you know, telling people, well, you know, this is a amount of hours that the actual work is it's mm -hmm. giving you. Uh, we do public events, we don't do public events, you're expected to read outside the meeting things, you're, you know, the, the kind of things that people, would want to would want to know uh, before sort of deciding. And one of the things that I I realized is one of the things, in, and I and I mentioned it today to uh, Council Person Nancho was that for my life I cannot find in boards and commission if if which ones are subject to open meeting law and which ones are not. And and I navigated and I wasn't able to find it. And this is, it's killing me because I'm always saying, you know, I put myself as an example of, I have privilege because I can come in public meeting, being recorded and say what I say, right? I sort of, I just talk, right? But not everybody has that sort of that privilege, right? People may not necessarily want to give public comment. People may not necessarily want to uh, serve in a public capacity where their emails can be, requested for public record where you know the meetings are being recorded for posterity on the website right and 
I am killing myself because today I have that epiphany, but also I realized that there is no way to learn in the website about those qualities of, of the meeting, right? So um, one of the things that we're, we are we work with Megan was this, this sort of template for all every single commission on board where you know they, they are gonna have to talk about that. So it's something that somebody can just go to the specific link of the specific commission on board download it and it's going to you know workload what they are doing how many hours they are meeting uh expected were outside or not from the meeting right mm -hmm. and, and when we talk about sort of revamping the website is adding adding that kind of things in a really accessible way right mm -hmm. and, and 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 also and i i'm i'm, I'm gonna confess that i'm not sure about it i think there is also no consolidated information about the the the, the or maybe it's the the full uh, vacancy at, at the moment for every single so every single there is um so if you go to that main page we we now we list the current vacancies and actually one thing that um i started since i've been mayor started doing was um when someone's you know it, it's it's can be a multi-week process once i've appointed someone to go through that process with city services and city council and then being um, confirmed by the council. So I've started putting um, that people are pending um, for a vacancy. So for example, arts council, just at the last council meeting, <clears throat> someone was on the agenda to be referred to city services. So now under arts council, um, his name is there, but it says, I think it says pending council. Um, approval or something like that yeah the, one of the good things that i have seen during the tenure of this committee they have seen sort of updates to that section of the mm. website um but one of the things that our recommendations are going to have is that template that was created by megan and sort of work with us uh, in relation to people understanding you know the specificities and the quirks and you know the idiosyncrasy of the specific uh boards and commissions that people may be interested mm -hmm. um because you know i'm serving right now in the compensation elected officials compensation advisory and um they, there is no sense about you know robert's rules there's no sense about uh, what will be a violation of a meeting so learning how to navigate those things and knowing what people are sort of getting into it um i think it's, it's one of the things that we're talking about and that's as a foreshadowing, it's, it's a section of a report. So when you all started, did did Alan Seawald come and go over? I thought Alan came and gave a presentation, right? Yeah, okay. yeah. But um, but you know, when Different. somebody when when somebody says, "Oh, how we can move the work forward?" Well, let's just have two people meeting, uh, advising the work. And if those two people are not the chair, somebody chair. That, that's going to be a violation because you know if you have four members <laughs> so and and people you know all there are a lot of specific situations that come out that are you know you cannot address in a on a talk on a training because it's a really specific sort of unique right um, well and, and that one is particularly unique right because it's it's a city council select um like an ad hoc right so it doesn't have any sort of established, it doesn't have anything sort of codified or established other yeah. than it's in the rules that the council can can create that kind of body for a period of time. And, and, and okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna move the conversation to members of the select committee. When I saw you raising your hand, was that fully purposely or not? Hey, Gwen. That was, that was purposely um hello thank you um what i was thinking was like i was i guess i envision like this kind of thing where it's like you click on a committee or a board and you go and you click on it and it says um subject to open meeting law you know like kind of like in your face <laughs> so like, i'm going to say just to, i mean i think all of any of these boards and committees would be subject to open meeting law okay that's that's um, like that's the norm 
so maybe a click through or something to like explain that or you know um like yeah right i guess they're all subject to open meeting law yeah um or just maybe some kind of explanatory thing for people to understand what it means to serve in the city and like what they might have to think about and what they might have to consider mm -hmm. um you know something more something that's just what i'm thinking off the top of my head that i was thinking about while i was listening to um javier and you yeah i mean i have other dreams that i have um are kind of uh, onboarding in general right so when um you know at the start of a term for and like an elected official it's easy to get Alan Seawald to come and sort of do a whole presentation. The thing with boards and committees is that it's constantly, it's, um, you know, it's rolling. So you can't, and, and that you wouldn't want to take time for each new, whenever, when a new member came on to stop everything for that, for that presentation. Anyway, my point is, um, one of my dreams is to create, um, sort of like a video where he it goes through his whole spiel and explains a lot of it and maybe like an FAQ that goes with it so that when someone mm -hmm. joins um, or when someone's appointed and um, you know that would be part of their process and you know they would have to get sworn in and then you know wa watch that take the ethics um, exam those sorts right. of things ethics um, conflict of interest Right. Open meeting, um, anything like that. I, I like that idea. Yeah, it would. I open meeting law is just so hard. I feel like those of us who've yeah, done it for really? years and years, Cynthia, you can... Robert's rules. Um, yeah. You know, um, I'm so. There's always questions, even if yeah. you're not. Yeah. It's, oh. <laughs> oh no, that's okay. I, I just trailed off. <laughs> I just trailed off thinking about open meeting law. Um, excellent. So I'm gonna Cynthia. Um, on the same topic, um, before I was on this committee, I was um had the privilege to serve on, you might have heard about it, Mayor. Thank you for coming tonight. Um, the redesigning power structures committee, um, based on a grant that um CES holds. And actually Jim Nash and Karen Foster came to one of our very early meetings because this the redesigning power structure folks were like, okay, well, what is this thing? What is this select committee? And they were explaining it. And I having you know, been on the board of health and totally um, bought into open meeting law, knowing full well that cannot be changed. The feedback that Karen and Jim got was the, the historical white supremacy of that structure and how it causes a barrier. In, uh, in, inherent, it's, it's going to be a barrier to some populations that we might want to attract. So the conversation about educating, I mean, we can't change it, we can't throw it out, even though some of my colleagues on that committee said, you gotta change it, you gotta blow it up. And we know that, that, that you can't do that, um, but educating, um, potential members about this labyrinth of, of, of power structure that we all adhere to and perform in. And it amazes me how we even get work done, but we do it. And yeah. so um, just to that education piece, and I think the video or an FAQ could be helpful in helping us um, if people are really turned off by it. Yeah, that's so interesting. I would, and I would love to, um, get hear that presentation from CES and know a little bit more about it. It's it's interesting and it's tragic, right? Because you know the open meeting law is is supposed to be about like doing all the business in open, in the sunlight, no backroom dealings, no, you know, it's all it's supposed to be about how to make things as accessible and open to the public and that there's there's nothing happening behind the scenes that they don't have access to. Um, so it's um that's that's hard that that duality of it is really hard i mean K karen and jim and i who have drank this kool-aid for so long we're we're really you know taken aback mm -hmm. um but learned a lot from that 
that conversation about how it could be a barrier. So mm -hmm. just wanted to bring that up. Excellent. Um, when? When okay. you're meeting. Sorry about uh, that. Um, I'm kind of moving around right now and I really apologize for that. I just, um, we're as late as usual today. So, um, like when it comes to like open meeting law, it's like, who can you turn to when you when you know something and you're just like, like, who can you turn to? Um, you know, it's kind of like, you know, sometimes there's intense stuff that happens, you know, there's the either amazing stuff or just like stuff that's like going on and um, I, I think it was told to me in the beginning that I could contact attorney Seawall if I had questions. And so, um, you know, like, I guess going to the inspector general's site or like knowing how to like deal with like little things like that, you know, like, I mean, I guess we can contact different people in the government to ask those questions, but knowing exactly who you can ask about what like mm -hmm. um you know that would that's something that it's kind of hard to learn but it's it takes time to learn those things because um not everybody understands the structure of government and like what rules what and you know that kind of a thing like who who do i call for this or who would i you know connect with with that and then sometimes like you might want to reach out to somebody but then you're like oh i don't know if i should you know or you know different things like that um, yeah, I, I hear that. I, so, I mean, I would say, I would hope that people who serve would feel comfortable going to whatever sort of staff person is staffing it or to the chair, um, okay. who, yeah. who could then direct them further. Um, but the city solicitor always says that he would much rather have a conversation with one of us than, you know, the attorney general's office because of one of us or something like that. You know, he's he's always happy to um to make sure that okay. we understand um the structure that we have to work in. Excellent. Gary. All right. I just want to talk a little bit about the process and a couple of questions that I saw through the survey and then we kind of um, through our discussions. And one was, where was it? There was just a, you know, a lot of people talked about feedback from the city. And I was wondering, was there, is there a way for people to, to contact someone for questions? Is there someone in charge of, of yeah. that? Who is that? Sure. So, well, right now it's Court Klein. It, yeah. So Court is the person in, in the mayor's office who who receives all the applications and then gives them to me and, and sort of does the whole process, then process, you know, uh, puts together the memo that goes to Laura for the council. He's he's the point person for appointments. Um, Is he yeah. also the person who does the website or updates the sites and stuff? He, yes, he can. I mean, there are a few people, but yes. You mean specifically around boards and committees? Boards and committees, yeah. Generally it's court, yeah. So court is actually, um, before you all like write down court Klein, um, court is actually gonna be moving to another position in the city soon. So um, uh, as soon as, you know, we'll have to hire for that position. Um, but it is the, it, um, the administrative assistant for the mayor's office. The other thing I wanted to say, like uh, in this committee, cause I know I talked to you mayor, um, I said there was a kind of a discussion from some of the respondents about uh, maybe having a, a list of preferred positions. And if you don't get one position. Uh, mm, yeah. Like, you know, so I, I, I'll turn it over to you because I know that you've thought about this. And, and so maybe you could say something. Yeah, I have. So how the, um, the application now allows you to tick off multiple boxes. So the thing that's always most flummoxing for me is when, when we get, um, when we get an application in that pe someone's like has chosen like said that they'd like to serve on six different you know committees and so trying to then figure out what their priority is or what their interest is or where they would best fit 
um, can be a little bit challenging. So um, Councillor Perry and I were talking the other day about the possibility of doing kind of a ranking or still allowing people to say, you know, that they, they have multiple interests, um, but maybe letting them sort of rank the order in which uh, they would like to be considered for those. Can I ask something related to that, Gary? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so, so for example, now in the in the website of the of the boards and committees, it's three, four, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fifteen, one, two, three, four, five, twenty, twenty-one um, openings. Mm -hmm. In the survey that uh, from uh, almost one hundred and fifty people, 40, 49 or forty-six stated that they were never contacted back, right? Okay. Um, so one of the things that we were talking in our last meeting, it was in relationship that um, in theory, <laughs> we should have enough uh, people power to fill out all the vacancies in theory, right? Mm -hmm. and, and sort of, and, and I do, I, I agree with Gary that, it, and, you know, streamlining a process where where we can use all the people who are not being appointed to uh, be able to move to positions that are, are, are vacant would be so one of the things that we have heavily talked about. Um, so yes, in theory, that's true. You know, there there are some boards or committees or commissions that people don't tend to appoint you know, apply for. Um, so it's, it, you know, it's, and it's constantly changed. So right now we're getting to the point where we're going to do reappointments. They happen in June or where court has just sent out um, emails to people that need to be reappointed asking if they would like to be reappointed or what they're, so that, always forces a lot of turnover. So things happen at different times where there's more vacancies. It's also just, I will be really honest, like it's a lot of work on my part too. Um, so sometimes, you know, it's, it's certain times of the year when things are really busy, unless there's like a, a real need that they, I might sort of, you know, I, I wish I could come up with a system where every month I do appointments on this day. It's just, the way my schedule is that hasn't happened. So um, it's rolling and it's also sort of rolling in my mind and I'm always trying to get back to it. It's not always happening as fluidly as I would like it to. Um, another thing that I saw that you wanted to ask about was, um, so some there are some uh, bodies that have requirements for, um, for positions, right? So, you know, there was a question about whether I ever kind of like solicit or if I go out or ask specific people. Um, sometimes you have to um, because it's, you know, for example, the historical commission needs to have um, two nominees from, from the Western Mass American Institute of Ar Ar Architects, one member appointed from Realtor Association of Pioneer Valley, two local from the Board of Realtors, Board of Health, there has to be a physician. Um, there, there are some specific things that mean you really have to like go out and and potentially find someone if no one's applied and often they haven't. Um, oh, the the um, there for the Board of Registrars, you still need a registered Republican and a registered Democrat. That certainly makes sense. Let me tell you, it is not easy to find a Republican in Northampton. And actually, we right before I became mayor, we um, had gone through a home rule petition process with the state um, to exempt us from the state requirement that that one of the license, one of the three members of the license commission be a, a registered Republican. So you used to have registered Republican, registered Democrat, um, and then a third member, because it's just, it's, like I would, I had to do this for the board of registrars and I know Mayor Narkowitz would tell me that he would have to do this. You would have to go like to the clerk and say like, can you please print out the all of the Republicans in the city? And then like, I'd be cold calling Republicans to try and get this filled. <laughs> so 
So theoretically, yes, we could just plug people into these spots, but it's not always that simple um, is, is one of the issues. Yeah, so it, it's it's good that you just say that. So we have to talk about, so that, you know, they are, they are advisory boards that are technical in nature. Mm -hmm. And are the those are in they are the ones that are community oriented in nature, right? And and we have been talking sort of from that sort of with that lens. Um, I'm gonna. So move. just you've been focused on talking about advisory boards versus. So there's three different. There's advisory, there's regulatory, and there's adjudicatory. Yes. Yeah. And and some fit multiple categories. Yes. <laughs> Uh, Jamila. Um, I, well, since you just brought up the three different types, can you talk about what the three different types are? Sure, because I copied that section, hoping you would ask. Hoping so. <laughs> okay, so advisory. So this is straight out of the um, the code. So advisory, uh, they have no legal authority to promulgate rules or regulations or decide individual cases or enact policy. So they are they are purely advisory um, and you know brought together around a topic to give advice on how uh, how best to proceed. Uh, regulatory, the body does have legal authority to promulgate rules and regulations, set charges and fees, decide individual cases and enact policy. Um, and then adjudicatory, the body has legal authority to hear and decide the rights and obligations of individual applicants. And then again, some are all three, some are two out of three, just one. What would the planning board be, for example? Okay, planning board is, um, it's, it may be all three, but I can tell you super quick. So just for every anyone, if you want to know this, um, if anyone wants to look this stuff up yourself too, um, if you on the city site, um, if you go to the section that says the charter and the code, um, that will and then click on that link that will bring you right in there, and you can look up any of these, um, any of the multi-member bodies in in uh, the code. Um, so planning board is all three: it's advisory, regulatory, and adjudicatory. Okay. Thanks. It also has the authorities and responsibilities of these, and many often on the on the city website on the page they will have copied and and pasted the section from the code in there as well, or from a general law. Excellent. Um, do you have any other questions, Jamila? Okay, Cynthia. Um, yeah, just a, again, questions about the process. Um, we have heard both through the survey and anecdotally um, that, uh, and I'll just say, I think the process needs some some review or work mm -hmm. and timeliness. And um, I'm sure, uh, um, and, and courtesy, right? A person who takes the time to apply and expects a genuine response, whether it be pro or con or whatever has that response um, in a in a timely manner. And so there must be, um, I would think, Mayor, do you have ideas about how that process can be improved? And then um, perhaps my second question is um, during COVID, the Board of Health, which I'm on, um, had a vacancy. And like, who wants to join the Board of Health during COVID <laughs> because of what we went through? But I kept asking, where are we with it? Where are we with it? Where are we with it? And there seemed to be a, a disconnect. And mm -hmm. so I, I don't know if it can be board members' responsibilities um, to help recruit. I, I'm not trying to usurp from the mayor's, um, you know, certainly executive privilege here, but, but I never really knew, like, how can I... How can I, as a board member, tap someone on the shoulder or, or, or forward this? So I guess my question is kind of twofold. Mm -hmm. um, process, your thoughts on the process, and also how do you feel about us helping you <laughs> to kind of release this logjam? 
Yeah, I'll take this the second part first. I, you know, I I think that's great, and and often, you know, I will turn to the the chair or the staff person um, and say, like, do you have any ideas? Or and and depending on, you know, there's sort of different different bodies of different cultures. Also, have different staff who are more engaged. Um, they will talk about it at a meeting and work on trying to recruit people. So that's that's great. I mean, that is very, very, very welcomed. Um, particularly, I mean, particularly, you know, if you serve on one of these bodies, then you, and you've, you've had a member step off, um, you know better than anybody sort of what, what they took with them, what expertise or what sort of area um, that they brought to that body that, that um, is now missing now that they've they've left it. So I I think it's I very much encourage um, you know anyone who's serving to encourage other people or or identify other people who they think would be really um, have a valued voice on there. That's great. Um, and then process. So yes, I think it absolutely could be improved. One of the challenges that I've tried to think through, and again, we're we're going to be, I, I will be, this is kind of a perfect opportunity for, or a perfect time for you all to be doing this exploration and then giving recommendations because there will be a new person in the mayor's office who will be overseeing this. So we can kind of start new and fresh and, and come up with how we want this to be. Um, so this is this works out really, really well. One of the challenges is that people apply all the time and not necessarily for something that there's an opening. So that's kind of the, so if someone applies and there's not an opening or it's one of these that there's a specific area that needs to be filled before I could apply, I could appoint somebody else, um, I don't really have, you know, I don't have a yes or no answer for that person. It's not like, okay, there's this opening, I've got five and, you know, I have now appointed one person. So I'm going to tell these four, they haven't been appointed. Um, openings happen all the time. You know, the, the next day someone could resign from that same committee and then, you know, so that's why we keep applications on file for two years. So it's not really a, it, it's not really a no, right? It's just, we, someone's appointed and then I, I hold, you know, I get a copy of all applications and I hold them and I very regularly go through them and I have different piles and um, I go back and, and try and fill from people who've already applied. So that's what makes it a little bit hard about, you know, of course I want people to feel um, a, appreciated for their interest. And I don't want them to feel sort of hanging out there, but how, I don't know how to put parameters around it because it's, I, they, they may be appointed in the future. And I've certainly appointed people who had applied, you know, even I've appointed people who applied before I became mayor. And then, you know, I have a conversation with them and say like, you know, I, I realize you, you, this was months ago and I, you know, I don't know where you are in your life right now, or there's something you're still interested in. But let's talk about it. And you know, is is this something that you still feel you could do or would want to do? And I think that gesture, um, you know, pulling that application out of the out of the pile, can be um, um, an individual's poor experience can be just diminished when the mayor calls them and says, "Hey, like you know, I I found this. Are you still interested?" I think the point is, um, perhaps there can be some communication to that applicant. We're going to keep you on file. Don't have anything right now. Really check with the, you know something that continues that conversation. Um, it's just that we had, you know, too many folks that just felt like they went into a black hole, so to speak. And um, mm -hmm. maybe, maybe also just a quick follow up. Um, we were talking we're talking a little bit about compensation mm -hmm. um, on committee services and um, some, you know, all the constraints around it. But just wondered. How you felt about it, and if that's a possibility at all. Um, to um, I've been in a couple of organizations, this redesign and power structures um, committee, again, non-city committee, 
was one that grappled with that and we did it on a on a opt-out scale right mm -hmm. if you felt you needed compensation you get 25 dollars a meeting or something like that do you think that's possible in the city so there are a lot of challenges to it um to be able to do that people would have to be set up in munis which is our our system um and that would need constant updated we, we've talked about it it would really need like an additional staff person to to try and handle that aspect of it um and because we can't we can't pay someone with city with taxpayer funds without essentially turning them into an employee um which makes it hard. Um, another, I also feel really strongly that it would, it, like if if it was, we couldn't just pick like this board or this commission, like it would have to be across the board because I, it, it should never be up to me to decide what someone's, in, where someone's interests lie, right? Or what they would like to serve on. Um, so how to do, that with the amount of boards and committees we have seems hard. I hear the opt out possibility. Um, it's just, it's a really hard thing to try and puzzle through how we could do it because we're a municipality. Yep. And I, you know, when I, as a counselor, I, um, I really wanted to look at council, whether we could do like a sliding scale for counselors and things like that. Like this is something that I've been thinking about for know, like nine years now, how to make this work. And um, again, these, these white supremacist structures that we work in are very, very hard. Um, and yeah, it's very, everyone would need to get a W-2 from the city, um, they're all, we can't, there's no way to like give gift cards. It's just, we cannot use taxpayer money um, to, to give to an individual without making them an employee. I think one of the, um, one of the other alternatives to compensation, and not, not for everyone's doesn't put food on the table, but feeling like you are of value um, to the city, feeling that what you're doing, this work that you're doing is important work and you wanna do it again for another term mm -hmm. and you wanna even tap a pal on the shoulder or, you know, cause we have such a diverse city where people come from so many different backgrounds. Um, hey, why don't you consider this? Because you can really learn a lot. Um, mm -hmm that encouragement um, can go a long way for us to have more members. So, I mean, I'm, you know, I'm looking, so I, I'm looking at you, Cynthia, and, and Javier and Gwen. Um, and so the the three of you all serve on, have serve on multiple things. So, I mean, I, I hope that you feel valued, you are, and I thank you so much for all that you do. It's interesting, like it, it becomes sort of, it's, it's a self-selecting process. So how do we bring more people in? Um, and then you often see a lot, you know, it's, it's like anything when someone, when you like step up to do something, then you're gonna be called on to do more things. Um, and so you see a lot of the same folks. So it's interesting that Cynthia mentions that, right? One of the things that we saw was that sort of a high level of frustration from people like they didn't take our recommendations and that i think that more than taking on or taking the recommendations speaks to the manning expectation of the people serving in advisory boards right uh -huh. uh, that you know you're going to give a set of recommendations some may happen others in the long term may happen others they may not happen at all right but and we saw in the survey uh, that a lot of people would say that, right? They, they would say, well, you know, I don't get the point because after that, when we recommended things, they never did it. Hmm. Which sort of speaks, it, it speaks to the sort of the clarity that people, you know, managing expectation, managing how things play out and understanding how things play out, mm -hmm. right? 
And I think that's also speaks to what um, Sint is saying. And in relation to compensation, um, I do believe strongly that in some point, maybe not now, but in the future, we need to find a way to, to, to facilitate and, and, the, and the, uh, people being able to serve and just because of the economical constraints, the survey that we, we, we moved forward with Laura, um, a huge amount of people are sort of middle age up people, wealthy white people, a lot, uh, mostly women. Mm -hmm. uh, mostly families with either no kids or kids that left home, so no dependents. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. That's that's sort of the demographic that we 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 saw in the in the survey, and and you know talking about <laughs> talking about a report that has to address the fact that the big bulk of you know we send a little more than four hundred uh, we a lot of people Laura sent more than 400 emails out uh, doing the outreach and we have gotten almost 150. So it, for me, it's a good representation of it. So I think that, that that's something that, you know, uh, it may warrant uh, sort of a, uh, some detailed research and see how we can do it. I mean, uh, you know, people sometimes say that they can observe because, you know, they don't have childcare child or, you know, um, we may see improvement in relationship to accessibility with hybrid meetings, right? Now that the House has, has sort of passed a bill that uh, is going to extend it to March 2025. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, there is a study from BU that states that, yeah, you with hybrid meetings, you get more accessibility, but you don't, you get more, more accessibility from the same demographic. You're not getting more accessibility for different, uh, and access, you, are, you access it more of the same demographic rather than from a pool of diverse people, right? And, um, and I see, <laughs> so I'm also serving in the compensation advisory board okay. and elected officials are grossly underpaid. <laughs> like I, can, I cannot put it in a, in, a, in a different, like obscenely underpaid. Right. And, and, you know, when, and one of the things that I have been doing is going around talking with elected officials from Greenfield, Springfield, was it Springfield, Chico, be, uh, is Hampton, Northampton. And, 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 and in, a, in, a, in a really simple question, which is how many hours do you feel you would need to actually put in this work to make it meaningful, having in mind that you are the one that has to vote a full fledged city budget, millions and millions. And the, the answer would be sometimes double of the time that they are able to spend right now, sometimes 150% more than the time. So if elected officials are having a hard time with that, people who are just want to volunteer time to be able to serve the city uh, that are led to their own devices, it's, it's really complicated. And I think that, you know, I, I'm for sharing to you that we, we made a slide of recommendation for the city to take a look into this in, in the future to be able to, um, to have you know, a professional take uh, somebody making a study, a, feas a feasibility study in relationship to uh, you know, per diems or something that is gonna create accessibility because the big barrier that we see is that upper middle class to reach wealthy people are the ones serving. And that's- Do you know, sorry, do you know is CES, I had met with CES, maybe when I was just mayor elect, it was very, very early on. Um, and they had said that they were exploring that or that they were kind of on their own trying to do that research. Do you know if anything's happened with that? Uh, if you're talking about the compensation mayor? Yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, when I was on this committee, they have a policy now. Um, so they wrote, accepted an, a, policy, a policy, so they are doing this practice. So th for themselves, yeah, um, they had told me that they were. Oh, go sorry, go ahead. It, well, actually, because um, on the committee I served, there was community members on the committee, so um, they could they could receive compensation. But if you're a paid employee, no, paid employee for CES, no. I um, I'm sorry, I should have been more clear. They I meant that they had said that they were 
looking for municipalities like they were they were trying to do some of that research to help cities and towns figure out an avenue for their their um bodies for their bodies yeah i mean that's that's maybe i misunderstood what they were saying they i know that they were sort of exploring and they they said you know we're we understand there there's some barriers at the municipal level but we'd like to look into that um, I, I think, and we could be talking, you know, two different paths, but on redesigning power structures, one of the things we wanted to do was to see if we could assist the city mm -hmm. in some capacity to think about redesigning their power structure. And that's why Jim and Karen came to a meeting. Mm -hmm. um, but the, you know, the rules and the regs and the open meeting kind of pushed that initiative aside. So the committee was looking for other opportunities if we're talking about the same thing, because they have a you know a boatload of grants that they're doing there. For sure, yeah, okay. Excellent. Um, Gary, and after that, when? And I wanna be mindful, we have uh, 13 more minutes and I wanna leave three minutes. So we have 10 more minutes. All right, um, so a couple of things that this has been a great conversation. Um, I, I think that for me, what really comes out is that some of this can be handled with the onboarding, uh, managing expectations. You know, there were people who felt like they didn't weren't doing, uh, or they weren't making a difference. But really, if there's an explanation going into it, I think it'll help. I did want to highlight to you, Mayor, that um, looking at the survey, one thing that stood out to me was the amount of people who said that they were consider applying for another board, uh, and it was extremely high. There's, 46% of the people agreed, uh, close to 20% strongly agreed, and only 9% disagreed, 6% strongly disagreed. So, you know, the people are willing to, like you said, it's a self-selecting body. So they're in there, they want to do it. Um, my question is moving away from the process um, and more about outreach. Something that I had noticed, and I think Javier mentioned, is that our demographics tend to turn towards older, you know, folks who have, have kind of lived their life, their, their kids are, are grown, they're out there. Um, and so I was wondering, you know, I, I had identified youth engagement as, as a thing. Um, do, do you have any thoughts about ways in which we can kind of do a better job at, at some outreach? A lot of what we saw in the survey was that people who know someone, or people, like if you knew someone involved in the city, you knew about these things. So, you know, I'll turn that over to you. Um, I'm kind of, I'm laughing because the one place we don't have problems recruiting people is the youth commission. There's oh. like 40 of them. There's so many of them. Um, and they are great ambassadors, I think for, um, for this kind of civic engagement. Um, you know, I, it's outreach. I'm, I'm all for any ideas that people have. We sometimes when there's, um, like a very specific need, or there's like a, a, a critical need because a, they need to get to quorum, you know, the city will do, will sort of put something out there. We may, we probably should be, this is something else for this next um, person, better about kind of regularly posting or highlighting um, vacancies that we have or reminding people that there are vacancies. Um, so, and for certain, for, you know, for, I've tried to reach out to um, housing authorities, to the Northampton Housing Authority, to different properties and, um, and try and put the word out there that there are vacancies. So we've tried to do some outreach and, and get more people who, um, who might not necessarily uh, you know, know about any, any, the possibilities, but there's not a sort of consistent way that outreach happens. Um, so I'm, I would love to hear, I would love for you all to come up with some ideas that we can try and implement. And, um, I'm always happy for counselors to, to, I used to do that when I was a city counselor would, um, periodically kind of put the word out that that um, people should serve. I would also just in conversations with people would 
you know, when they would be like, oh, like, what's this about? Like, what do you do? And I would always say like the best place to really start to get involved is on one of the, one of the many boards and commissions that we have. And there are always rotating vacancies. So, you know, please apply. Um, I feel like I'm wandering all over answering your question, Garrick. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but any, any ideas for outreach and, um, and again, empowering the committees and commissions themselves to do that outreach. And when they are, they know that they have a vacancy to talk about it in their meetings, though, you know, there's not always a lot of the public who are um, in subcommittee meetings um, or in um, these kind of meetings, but to kind of put out to their networks that, um, that they serve and they find it to be a valuable way to contribute to their community and they'd be interested in talking to other folks about it. Um, does that answer what you're saying? What you're yeah, asking? it was open-ended. There was not, you know. That's why I'm just going and going. <laughs> and going. <laughs> I mean, I, I have some thoughts. I told you a couple of my ideas and, yeah. and I'm sure we'll put some in our report, but just want to check in. Yeah. When? Well, of course. Um, I'm kind of like, I'm rewinding all the way back to what Cynthia was saying was, what about having the chair <laughs> assign somebody or, you know, I mean, the chair is always going to be the gatekeeper. That's who ultimately decides what goes on the agenda and things like that. And I think that's fine for a lot of boards and commissions, but not all of them. So have, I'm sorry, did you say have the chair assign somebody? Um, Cynthia was talking about how like a lot of times like a chair, like, and I can totally understand on the Board of Health Commission um, that you, that the Board of Health, you know, they would know exactly, you know, what they're looking for. They know the qualifications of the people that they need to find. And so I think in that case, it would be really important um, that the chair would share with the board, um, what they're looking for. Um, and then also like maybe have the board members be able to give feedback on that in some way. So yeah, the board members are, are should always feel feel welcome to give feedback. Um, and you know, either directly to me or to the chair or to the staff person, certainly directly to me. Um, mm -hmm. I'm always happy to hear it. And you know, sometimes some Sometimes there's certain things I'm looking for too, because it's advisory, you know, I'm, I'm asking for help on various different things. Um, so I'm always happy to have conversations about, you know, where, where I feel like I could use some expertise or, or help. Okay. Thank you. I think also know, knowing that, I, I mean, in, in the Board of Health, which I, you know, totally respect all my colleagues, we never had the conversation, right? And if we did post COVID, you know, we would have had many, many ideas. And so I think it's just having that green light, knowing that you could, mm -hmm. that it's okay, that it could be on the agenda every time there's a vacancy and talk right. about what we might need. I think that that's so healthy. Um, and, and, and it would, you know, it would be in the minutes and then it could be fed up to 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 you, Mayor, like this is what we think we need right now um, so that you don't have to do the work. <laughs> so it's a, it's a cultural change, right? In yeah, each yeah. No, I agree. That would be helpful because I do feel like I, I'm often sort of like tracking down department heads, you know, like I'd be like, Meredith, I see there's a vacancy, like what are you looking for? Or... Um, right. Yeah, so I, I would be happy to to have, you know, have it just be more of a conversation that comes can can be initiated from either side. Yeah. Thank you. Excellent. So we have five more minutes. Um, thank you so much, Mayor. Thank you. <laughs> Long day for you. That's true. <laughs> Long day for everybody, right? We're all, it's, it's 8.55 for all of us. <laughs> Thank you for your time. Thank you. It's good to be with all of you. Thank you. Thank you so much for, thank you so much for the work you're doing on, on this um, and for helping us try and expand, um, expand uh, 
the voices that that contribute to our city. Um, and thank you all also for all of the work that you do on the various things that you sit on. You are um, a group of superstars who do a lot. Um, so I I want to tell you my heartfelt appreciation for um, for your commitment and your love for our community and on all of the many, many hours that that um, you give to making Northampton an even a greater city than it is. So thank you very genuinely. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Oh, and I put it, sorry, in the chat, I put um, just that link that'll take you right into where the charter and the code is. So there you go. Okay. okay. Thank you. Bye. Yeah. Excellent. So it's uh, four minutes. There are just about time to um, so I, hold on, let me, I was extremely, sadly, badly multitasking. Uh, so Avemos QR code. Uh, so uh, I added, so it's either, you know, either the, the hyperlink in the PDF version or the QR code physically. Either way, both work. I'm gonna add the thoughts in the first one in uh, the process and accessibility for serving, right? And I will send this tonight to you. Uh, and Laura, and you know, the mayor just left, but one of the things would be great is that the city and, and the in social media, if the city can just post this during the week. Definitely, I'll send it to court. Okay. On the new slash feature. Excellent. What Excellent. is it? The new slash feature of the website, it's the scroll sort of at the top of the home page that has um, most pressing announcements. Okay. Yeah. I think it has the new um, D Department of Community Care um, director right now. And oh, exciting news yeah. today about the new DCC worker. Mm -hmm. today. Yeah. It is. Excellent. So um, I just want to remind you, so the only one that I have heard that is not able to make the 26 is Cynthia, because how tiny our group is, uh, all the rest of us have to have, have to be there. <laughs> because if not, we, uh, we wouldn't have, uh, or I'm not going to say. We, I, think, I think you could. We, no, 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 no. <laughs> Everybody should come. <laughs> So yes, you're right. Yes, but I know that everybody is, is coming. Um, if you have any questions, just feel free to email me. Remember, don't, don't, if when all the material I'm going to be sending, don't reply all, because that, that would be a violation of the mini law. Okay. Uh, just answer to me. Send me any comments uh, that uh, before 10 a.m. tomorrow for edits to the flyer, and I will send it to you. Um, is there any question about anything that we have talked today about? We should be able to test the 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 um the QR code, right? I just tested. Okay. So I tested. Please, when I send it out, test it again. Murphy's law. If we don't test it, is if we not test it, it's not gonna work. If we test it, it will work. Okay. So, um, uh, Gary. My only question is, I know you said you're going to print out some things to put around. Uh, yes. If you could leave some, maybe at Laura's office or something, or I, I don't know how I would pick yeah, some up. Yeah, I, I, can, I, can, I can do that. Uh, okay. I'm not, I'm not going to say I, I promise I'm going to get it, but I, it would be easy for me to, if I'm in town, maybe after I drop off my kids, I could pick some up. So Perfect. Uh, also, I want to say thank you so much to Garrick and Jamila that when uh, it went through the Newman show to promote this event and talk okay. about sort of the nature of our work and what we're doing and what we are up to. Thank you so much. I totally, I totally forgot that. Thank you for that. I remember that. So, Cynthia. Uh, just a quick question. I don't know if Laura, you have this information, but there must be some um, box checking communication plan whenever the city wants to get information out. Um, and I'm just thinking about that for our final report. You know, what are all those places? Who's in charge of that? Um, when we talk about publicizing open positions. 
so that there isn't that deep hunt for them. And so I don't, I don't know, or, if, or is it all catch can in the city? Um, flyer here, an initiative there. Well, they probably have some kind of a standard uh, format in the mayor's office, but. Um, okay, if we can explore what that is, that would be cool. Sure. Yeah, I, I'm not. Do you mean for 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 the material that we're putting out for the listening session, or no, no, in terms of barriers um, and how how are people accessing social media, or traditional print media, or whatever? Yeah. How do we how do we publicize? How do we communicate? Yeah, um, the, 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 I'm sorry. No, I just I just want to say that in the health commission, we just know if we got to tell people something, boom, 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 boom. This is what we yeah. do because it's a generally an emergency. Yeah. So, so yeah. just wondering if there's a protocol, I guess, communication protocol. Accessible to all. Mm. I just was at a meeting the other night and they said, well, we put it in the Hampshire Gazette. Well, not everybody can afford to pay to get onto the Hampshire Gazette. So that's not really, if it was just that. So, um, and really I only need a couple of copies, um, but I mean, I could take 10 and probably 10 would be a good number. Um, and if Laura, or I don't know who I would pick them up from at, at City Hall if I pop in there. Um, Laura, I will visit you in some point tomorrow and we will okay. talk about this. <laughs> Sounds good. Thank I'll just come in the next time I go to Aminu's uh, and then when let's let's sort of get in touch and I can drop stuff for you. Okay. Excellent. So um, I'm assuming there is nothing else. I'm looking for a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Looking for a second. Second. Excellent. Second by when? Uh, Laura. Javier. Yes. Uh, Jamila. Yes. Garrick. Yes. And Cynthia. Yes. And Gwen. Yes. <laughs>